Hi everybody, my name's Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Yad. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and we are your family, and you guys are our family, and we really appreciate all of you guys out there. We really appreciate all the feedback we get from this. We appreciate the comments, and we we really, truly love the people of our creator. You guys are all awesome people, and um, we are towards getting towards the end of our camping out of Sukkot. Uh, gentlemen, does anyone here not have a backache? Does anyone, does anyone feel healthy? No. No. You feel anyone feel real good and spunky? No. No. Tired. Yeah, tired. It's getting towards the end of this. Um it is it is I'm not I don't really like this festival. It's probably because we are not equipped for this festival. Um we don't have waterproof tents and so it's always a fight. Um trying to stay uh not laying completely on the hard ground. So it is one of these hard festivals to keep. Um, it shouldn't be, though. It should be like one of these really fun things. And I know people out there, they go to their little um, communities and they all have huge uh, shindigs. And they're all like farting up for uh, all, all the whole times that they're out there. But I think they all have like really nice tents or the people like sleep in RVs or campers or things of that nature. But we are roughing it and we are on our backs on the ground. And so here we are. Um, <clears throat> gentlemen, um, how are you guys? How's everything good. besides that? Good. Everything good? Yeah. A little quiet here. It's the end of the week. Um, today is a preparation day. Can anyone talk to me a little bit? Uh, talk to everyone out there a little bit. What a preparation day is. Uh, preparation day is the day that uh, before Shabbat is a rest day. Is the day we take off. So that the preparation day is where we cook, we clean, we do everything we do so that we don't have to do anything tomorrow. So tomorrow is a day of reading our scriptures, a day of resting, a day of talking with Yah. And we don't have to do anything besides uh, just that. So does a Hebrew day start at um, the sunrise or sunset? It begins at sunset. The day Sun ends and begins at sunset. How do we know that? How do we know when a day begins according to scriptures? Uh, it says from sunset, sunset to sunrise. Yeah, and so it actually says it in Genesis 1. And it talks about creation. And um, we either have to say that our creator made a mistake and he got his words messed up when he was writing, getting stuff to Moshe or that evening and morning make the very first day. And he told, he tells us all the story of creation throughout six days of the week and evening and morning was the first day. And so, um, also, you know, people have a lot of the confusion. A lot of people are, um, they, they believe the Sabbath starts when the sun rises and you are actually, uh, you know, part of the day off and you know you can take scriptures and you can look at scriptures and anytime that somebody was uncling they were uncling till when gentlemen uh, evening evening and what did they have to do to become cling they had to bathe bathe you ba be bathe and you'd become cling and so all the people becoming cling uh they, if it was the sun rise in the morning and that's when your sabbath day or your days began was in the morning then they would only be cling for like half of a day all right, gentlemen, um, we are into the writings of Abraham. This comes out of our Apocrypha series. And before we get into that, I want to throw us over here because there is a limited edition number of these scriptures that are available. Um, there will be a thousand of these that will be ordered. We are taking pre-orders for these right now. The writings of Abraham is in this book. Uh, there's, a, there's a group of us, about 15 of us, that we're going over the very last of these books again. And once we finish off... This final read in the scriptures, we're going to read it one final time. When we're done with reading this one final time, this is going to go to our shippers, to our printers, and it will take uh, about basically two months, roughly about two months or something to, to get to us. Um, it, Nicole's hang, putting her, her hands up over there. She says four months is what it takes to get it from that side of the world over to us. But these Bibles are going to be amazing print. Um, they've never had a scriptures out here like this. Every one of these have the restored names of our creator, his son, all of our patriarch family um, from back in the days. And um, this is what the books are. And so if you would like to help Boss Clan out, and a lot of people throughout the years have said, how can we help you guys out? Well, this is how you guys can help us out. Order scriptures. When you guys order the scriptures, um, for every one scripture, as once we get this set up, we are going to be able to start mass pushing these Bibles into prisons and get a 103 book um, scriptures that have never, ever been freely distributed to prisons. So for everybody that is ordering these, you guys are helping with a prison ministry. You're helping get brothers and sisters and change these scriptures. And we're hoping to change the world with this. And so 
with that, um, we will get into our reading of today. And um, for anybody that can't afford these, there's t there's PDFs, and they're both located down in the description below. Um, th this is the Apocrypha. It is uh, 37 books, I believe, that the Apocrypha is. Free PDF, beautiful PDF that you guys are reading. You guys can download it, pass it on to your friends. And the, the hidden word of our creator is not hidden anymore because it is it has been given to us <clears throat> and we can see it. So here we are. Um, anybody want to do a quick recap of yesterday in chapter four, all the one through four? What what happened? What did we learn yesterday that we didn't know before? Kate? Um, Jade, we learned anyone? that um, Tara talks about his son, how he hid his son, how basically... How he basically came home, destroyed all his gods, destroyed everything he had, and then we find out. That Wait a second, was that yesterday? That wasn't yesterday. That had nothing to do yesterday. Yeah, it is. No. Yeah. Tarak went and. No, no you're like, you're way off. Yeah, yeah, you're way off. That's not, had nothing to do with No, this time about, about Abraham, how um, it begins with basically his time about genealogies and his dad, and how, how Nimrod's super power, powerful and has magics and stuff like that. Yep. And he has this, like, these special clothes that gives him, like, power or whatever, and. Um, how uh, when they confused languages, they lost it all. But then Satan started giving Nimrod some words back in his new language, but he didn't have the full power anymore. Yeah. And he starts talking about his uh, his parents. I was starting to go for the genealogy line, and it talks about um, I don't know, was it great grandpa, Shem's great grandpa. I don't talk about Shem and how he's Melchizedek, how he's the great <coughs> priest. Talks about him a little bit in the Bible and stuff. And then uh, we also learned that um, uh, Noah. It talks about Noah and his uh, kids. Yeah. And so one of the things just as we, we were discussing is uh, about the, the, the word casting, right? The spelling, the way that somehow back in the days they had the ancient words where they were able to, to <clears throat> concoct the words together to where they were able to basically spell cast is what it sounded like. They were able to, to do things and they, they had power back then. And it's probably good nowadays that they don't have that kind of power. We did touch on all the Satanists and all the demons and warlocks and all the other people that do the same stuff where they will all um, simply, you know, concoct things and, and do all this this horrible stuff. All right, so let's let's begin. Um, for everybody out there, again, thank you guys very, very much for joining us. We do love you guys all. Um, to our, uh, I, I want to give a shout out to uh, two of our gals out there who are helping us read um, Miss, let's see, who do, who we, who do we have? We have, uh, Miss Candy and we have Ruby. Ruby. We have Ruby and we have Miss Candy. Both of them are actually reading with us on this, I think, but we, for sure, Ruby, give her a shout out on this stuff. Ruby is going through, um, our scriptures line by line through the Torah and she is doing a very, very wonderful job. Much love to Diane out there. Much love to Trish out there. Much love to everybody who's really putting it down for our scriptures and trying to get these as perfect as possible. And we are very excited about the, the hard print coming out. So a huge shout out to them. Okay, chapter five, we begin. The mother of Noah was also the daughter of Methuselah. For Lamech and his wife had the same father, but different mothers. All right, is that anything new to any of you guys? None of us here uh, by this table, but... Kind of, it's like a lot like Abraham, how Abraham was married to um, Sarah. Yeah, it's like his half-sister. Yeah, it's right. Okay, two. And when Noach was born, his body was full of light, which caused great consternation to his father and his and mother and father's wives and children in all his house. Okay. Um, and we knew this. We knew that he freaked out because he, he thought that she had been with a fallen. And that's yep. why he's like, oh, he's like, we like when I think it was, uh, he went to Methuselah or whoever's, uh, like, oh, it may have been Enoch. He went to one of them and uh, he's like, hey, what happened with all my child? Yeah, extracurricular books that are out there, it talks about this as well as the birth of Noah was a huge thing. Like, it was a, um, a spectacular supernatural thing. Three, moreover, the child stood upon his feet when he had come forth from the womb, and his tongue was loosed, and he did sing praises unto Yahuwah, saying, I will praise thee, O Yahuwah, for thou art the source of all power. <clears throat> Yea, the wellspring whence it floweth unto the sons of Elohim, and thou art also abounding in wisdom and great and mighty counsel unto thy servants. All right, what do you guys make of this? <clears throat> the kid um, jumps up I out of the world. I guess he's like, I guess he's born, starts speaking. That's um, pretty. First uh, of all, do you guys do you guys believe this? Uh, I think so. Yeah. You like? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I believe it too. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that most people are like. Oh no, these are the boy. You, these you can't believe any of this stuff. I think it was a supernatural thing, and the birth of Noah was the. Essentially, the final chapter of how 
society was going to be saved, how we are going to do it. And so this I mean, was if a, a donkey can talk. I'm pretty sure we can have a baby talk. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if a donkey if a donkey can talk, then why not a baby? Okay, four. Nevertheless, thou art a Elohim who is long suffering in judgment. We did a, yeah, so nevertheless, <clears throat> though thou art a Elohim, who is long suffering in judgment, the sins of the children of men have come up before thy face, and thy fury hath waxed strong, and will be visited with judgments upon the earth. Thy mercies, O Yahuwah, are beyond number, but thou art Elohim that visiteth wrongdoing upon the children of men, who the fullness of their iniquity hath come upon them. Therefore shall the earth be destroyed according to the word of Elohim, which cannot fail. For the waters of the flood shall come up on the earth, and all things shall perish from before the eye face, O Yahuwah. Nevertheless, in thee do we put our trust, for in whatsoever thou doest, O Yahuwah, thou hast ever done justly. Amen. Six. Anyone have any thoughts on that? Anything at all, Eli? Um, he's just praising Yahuwah. All right. Anything, Jobs? Um, no, but it's a... Uh... Pretty cool to see that he didn't know he like he he's barely born like he doesn't know who he doesn't know who that is yeah he just barely born he's the baby but all things like praise Yahuwah yeah and I think it was like one of those those miraculous things that he just he went and it he did that and, and then he probably went back to like a baby for him right, like and, he didn't like sit there as like a little miniature baby that was like walking and talking and like knew all this stuff I think it was one of these miracles of like holy moly. Uh, what in the world is going on here? And it probably scared his dad because his dad was all into idol worship. Pro, and, dude, like, it probably stones. scared everybody. Dude, if you have a little baby. Well, I mean, all... those who believe in Yah, they, they could see something like this happening, but someone's like starts praising Yah like another Elohim and this other not besides their idols. <laughs> it, Tarek's probably freaking out. It will be freaky. I'm telling you, it, the entire thing would be freaky regardless if you knew Elohim or if you didn't. Um, having a little baby, because, you know, you guys, babies. Don't babies, talk to like nine months. Babies don't move. Right, they have this little like uh, they have, like little heads bob up and down, and they, they they sit there and puke all down their chins, and they can't even they can't even do anything. They just sit there and yeah, they they cry. Like you guys, your mom had to like uh, she wrapped you up in a blanket. She like basically like bandaged you guys together. Your arms were down to your sides. You couldn't see. Yeah, swaddle is what she says. You couldn't do anything, right? You couldn't roll over. You couldn't lift your head up. You couldn't do nothing. This baby jumps up. It starts praising Elohim, and all of a sudden, you know, it would be a, <laughs> it would be a thing to talk about, no doubt. All right, six. These things were a source of amazement and concern upon Lamech, unto Lamech, who thereupon went unto his father Methuselah, and finding him in the high echo, he said, "My father, this day did my wife, thy daughter, bear a man child." Now, what's a high echo? Uh, that is <laughs> a temple. It's a temple. It's a, it's a temple. Yeah, it's a temple. And so he found him, found Methuselah hanging out in the temple, and he goes, my father, um, I have a problem. There's, there's something happening here. Okay, two. And at his birth, the room was full of light so that we could not look upon him when we could look upon him. When we could look upon him, behold, the child's hair was white, and fire seemed to come from his eyes. And then he stood upon his feet, unto, upon his feet and sang a hymn of praise unto Yahuwah. And lo, he seemed to have the tongue of a messenger. Tell me now the meaning of these things, and how can I raise such a son? Now, what is the what is the major problem here? Why is everybody kind of tripping out? Why why is this a big deal? Well, one, he's like he's he's different looking than the rest mm -hmm. of them. Like like he's like has like fiery eyes. I assume that's like red. Yeah, you would in the. I don't want to be mean, but you would say you see something like that it would be kind of freakish, right? You would be you would see. Um, white hair, fire from the eyes. The kid pops up, starts singing. Um, it's going to be a, a very interesting thing. I don't know what diversity they had in that world at that time, but like it probably was something looking he, when he like is glowing, I guess, and his hair's all white. I mean, you don't get white hair until you're like really old. You there are like, well, normally. that's the thing. I found a babies with white hair um, for the thumbnail. You'll actually see babies with white hair. But going back to why is this such a huge deal? Why is Lamech concerned? Why is, why are all these guys like really tripping on this? Because it could be a son of the fallen. There it is. Yes, it could be a son of the fallen, and that is why they are all tripping out completely. Because for them. They went through an entire world where it was just human beings, and then all of a sudden the human beings started mating with the, the Watchers, <clears throat> and then the Watchers started having the the Nephilim, the Nephilim, and the Eliad, right? They started having giants that were larger and bigger and stronger than every other generation after that, and all of a sudden their kid comes out looking like angelic, 
and um, it is a, it is a problem, definitely a problem. Okay, let's uh, continue on. Where are we at here, folks? We're on the next. Uh, I think two, two, seven. Are we going to seven? Okay. Hearing these words, Methuselah too was troubled and said, "Fear not, my son, for although I know not the meaning of these things, I will go unto my father, Henoch, Enoch, for he is privy to the messengers, and he will be able to explain all things to us." Whereupon Methuselah traveled to the top of the highest mountain, whence he could speak unto his father, Henoch. And he said unto him, My father, my daughter, who is the wife of my son Lamech, hath this day brought forth a man-child. And at his birth the room was full of light, so that they could not look upon him. And when they could look upon him, behold, the child's hair was white, and fire seemed to be coming from his eyes. And then he stood up on his feet and sang a hymn of praise unto Yahuwah. And lo, he seemed to have the tongue of a messenger. Thus saith my son Lamech, thus saith my son Lamech, who is greatly perplexed as to the meaning of these things and how he can raise such a son. Okay, so his pops, so he had to go up to the top of a mountain. Yeah, I don't know how long that took. What, what kind of journey was that? Reminds me of those old nomads, right? Or the guy you have to travel like. The grandmaster. Yeah, it's some grandmaster sitting at the top of a mountain, some shell and monk or something. You have to sit outside the, 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 the gates of the, the temple for like, you know. Two years uh, before did, they ever did, let you he in. He did disappear all the time, then come back like once a year. He did, he did. And so it seems like the kids knew exactly where he was at. So let's continue on. <clears throat> Eight. Hearing this report, Enoch, Hanok, comforted his son, Methuselah, saying, Fear not, my son, nor fret thyself about this matter. For this, for did not a Kodesh messenger visit thy son Lamech and tell him that this should be the seed of the future generations? And was it not so? For this cause have these things happened. But on the eighth day, when the child is circumcised, he shall be covered and shall appear as other men, except that his hair shall remain white, as a token that through him, Yahuwah will do a mighty work. This word did Methuselah return to his son Lamech, and he was comforted. So what do you think? When Methuselah had a, like, his stomach didn't hurt as bad on the way back, right? On the way there, he's like, oh. Maybe he felt better. Maybe he's like rejoicing. Maybe it's like a good, it's a good, good. It's a good thing. He learned something, and... It's kind of crazy that his uh, that Enoch knew all this stuff, right? That he could he go and, and hang out and go wherever the top mountain was, wherever Enoch existed, and that's where he was, and he knew us. He knew what was happening. Okay, nine. And on the eighth day, when the child was circumcised, he was covered, that he became as other men, except that his hair remained white, and they called his name Noach, by which by interpretation is comfort, because Lamech said, My heart is comforted to know that my seed shall be preserved. Through the great flood. We'll finish off with 10 in here. And the child grew and waxed strong in wisdom and mighty in the power of the kahuna. For he was initiated into the order of the ancients. In his childhood and learned the rites and ordinances and the powers of the kahuna. With the signs and tokens and key words. Wherewith he could call upon the powers of the shimaim to combat the forces of the adversary. Okay, what is the kahuna? Gentlemen, I appreciate it. Okay. Um, now we have the Order of the Ancients. We have heard of something here that I don't believe that we've heard of before in this book, right? Um, the Order of the Ancients. And who's taking a stab at this? Who knows? What, you guys know what this is, right? Mm -hmm. What is it, Eli? So it's basically like the ones who are like super like holy, basically. Like the, basically like the, uh, how do I show it? Basically the ones who are like super holy. Like they have like a certain amount of rules and stuff. And they're in the Order of the Ancients. Like there's Enoch. There's like all like the forefathers. They were all part of the Order of the Ancients. Shimuel. Shim. Yeah. Shim was Shim. part of it. Yeah. And so um, it is a uh, a club for Kadesh people, right? And that is um, where our forefathers came from is um, the Order of the Ancients. Two. And when he was come to age... He took 12 wives and begat many sons and daughters who grew up in righteousness and served Yahuwah all their days. And some died and others were caught up unto the city of Kanak. So it's not like a whole city went up and a whole bunch of people besides Enoch went up. Well, okay, so we have something we got to talk about this, right? So when he's come to age, he took 12 wives. I don't know what age is exactly. Um, uh, we know I age is a lot younger than it is now. Yeah, like a thousand years old. Yeah, well, no, coming to age is like 13 years old or something of the sort in, in back in the day. So I don't know exactly how old uh, our uh, home father uh, Noak was, but he was. Uh, he definitely had 12 wives. So that's very interesting, right? Because you do not catch this in any other scriptures, right? There's no other scriptures that you ever hear anything about this. In the regular um, Genesis, you have no idea they hear. You hear about Shem, Ham, and Japheth, but you do not hear about any of this prior stuff, 
Okay, let's continue on. Anyone have anything to input on this? Nope. Okay, three. But in the next generation, they corrupted themselves. For the daughters of Noah's sons did go forth and lay with the sons of men, which thing was an abomination in the eyes of Elohim. Now, why is why is laying with the sons of men an abomination? Why is why is this sons a problem? Of men, those are the uh, fallen. Well, the, well, they're, they're Cain. The, the, yeah, if you take, it's not just the. I mean, it's it's anything that is in that line. So anything that is in the the, um, the polluted line of DNA, which unfortunately I hate to say, but we are living in these exact same times. The DNA of human beings has been completely corrupted, and YouTube is not a place where you can even say anything about that. But for those with eyes to see and ears to hear. Um, it is over. So the days of Noah are here again, which is why we all need to be ready, 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 ready. Okay, four. Wherefore, Yahuwah said unto Noah, <clears throat> Behold, the daughters of thy sons have sold themselves. For behold, my anger is kindled against the sons of men, for they will not hearken to my voice. Wherefore, all those who go in unto them will be destroyed with them. All right. Um, anybody have a... Final wrappings on this? Um, I don't think so. I mean, we it's, it's built up to the flood here. This is an interesting book, huh? Yeah. We could go on for a while, huh? Yeah, we, uh, yeah. but no, I know he uh, he didn't get onto the ark until he's like, I think, five or six hundred years old. So I don't know how old he is here, but uh, he's got, uh, got like half a millennium to go here. Yeah, he's got a long time to go and to walk and to walk with the uh, corrupted um, people of the, the earth at that time. And so... I guess with that, we will leave it with this. Um, we have nothing but love for all of you guys out there. We hope that you have a wonderful day. And we a wonderful you, Shabbat. And a wonderful Shabbat tomorrow. Um, when is the high Shabbat? When is our final high Shabbat? Sunday. Sunday. So it goes, from a, it goes from Shabbat to a high Shabbat again. And so, yeah, so I guess we have a couple of days off again on this. And so um, we will keep you guys updated, y'all willing, on all of this and how things are going. So much love to everybody out there. We will see you again soon. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom.